Message to the man who shot me. You remember the night? 2015, you came to my New Year's party. It's a good night, too. Good party, everyone having a good time, looking good. And you decided that a packed dance floor would be the right place to pull out a gun and shoot someone in the chest. And that bullet went through that guy, through the guy behind him, and hit me in the back. And I spent the rest of that night in an emergency room, getting that bullet cut out of my side, thinking, what would make someone do something like that? And I was angry, real angry. I was angry that people got shot at my party. I was angry that I got hit. And I was angry at the culture, our culture, that promotes killers and killing, a culture that I help promote. So I got to tweeting, I got to IGing, I did interviews, I was just gonna save the world, I was gonna do something about it. But a man gotta eat, right? So I went back to work, made some more videos, did some installation art, made a movie, Superfly, and I created a show for Viceland called Mr. Tachyon. Think Mythbusters if it was hosted by Iron Man. And we did really real experiments on the fringes of science. So I'm putting brain caps on psychics when they do readings, I'm doing remote viewing exercises, I'm testing out herbal medicine. And while I'm researching the show and all these different episodes, I come across a bunch of information about the brain, how it develops, how it's damaged, and how it can be repaired. So while this is going on, the city pops off this summer, you remember it. A guy drives a van down the sidewalk at Young and Finch, kills 10 people, and injures 13. Queen Street, broad daylight, tourists walking around, man them kill two people, hit some girl just standing there. Kensington Market. Four people shot, one person dead. Scarborough on a playground, these youths chase after a man, miss him, and hit two kids. And then in Greektown, some guy walks down the street just shooting at people on restaurant row, hits 13 people, and kills two. So the whole city's lit, everyone's on fire. What, what's going on? Everyone's talking about it, no one wants to go downtown. And I go talk to the mayor, John Tory with Cardinal Fischau and Taj Black Lion. And when that meeting hits the news, I become the guy that everyone wants to talk to. I'm getting phone calls from businessmen, I'm getting calls from lawyers, I'm getting calls from club owners, uh, DJs, entertainers, uh, community workers, even Street Matter hit me up. And everyone got something. We need more arts programs. We need more cops. We need sports programs. We need harsher sentences for gun crime. We need uh, nature retreats for kids in the projects. And then the street men are just like, ain't no one gonna listen to y'all anyways. No one cares what you gotta say, X, or the mayor. Maybe it's true. But the one thing that was never coming up was your decision to use violence and where that decision comes from, the brain. Now, you might be like, yo, X, you're a director, what do you know about the brain? True, I'm not a neurologist. But I can read the studies that neurologists have published and connect thoughts, and that's the point of publishing studies. <laughs> so I read some studies, and I came across some interesting things about people who lash out with violent and aggressive behavior they found that the brain of these type of people has some distinct differences than the average person in the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. So the prefrontal cortex is where decisions happen. It's the part of the brain that slows down when you drink alcohol. And they found that people had less volume and less gray matter in their prefrontal cortex. The amygdala, where emotions are regulated, this part of the brain was overactive, too big. So this may be what's happening with you. You get angry, 
Your emotions get the best of you, and then you lash out violently. But what's the cause? Well, I come across another study, and this one is about the abuse and neglect of children and the effect that has on the developing brain. And amongst the regions in the brain that are damaged are the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. And this is another part of the conversation that I found lacking when everyone was talking about gun violence and violence in general. No one ever talks about the way these kids are raised up. How did they grow up in the communities? You know, I don't know you like that. I don't know your home situation. But if you told me that it was messed up, I wouldn't be surprised. And if you told me that your neighborhood was a madhouse, no surprise there either. So is that it? Lottery of your life. These are your cards. That's what you got. Go on. I found some more studies. And these ones were about meditation and what they do to the brain. People who meditate have parts of their brain that have great benefits. And these parts of the brain are the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. People who meditate have more gray matter and more volume. Their amygdala is calmer, smaller. And there are places that have used meditation to calm violent individuals and calm violent environments. A study of 271 maximum security prisoners, each one of them doing a different program. Some of them were doing a, a counseling program. Some of them were doing drug rehab. Some were doing a Christian group. And another set were participating in a transcendental meditation program. And they tracked these guys for 15 months. And they found only the regular participants in the meditation group improved. They had more self-awareness, more awareness of goals and norms. They were more self-modering, more self-respecting, more communicative, and a significant reduction in aggression. I found a news report about a prison in Mexico, one of the most violent prisons in Mexico. One year they had uh, some kind of kickoff. They, 11 men were killed and they set them on fire. The next year they had a prison riot. 44 people were killed. They knew they had to do something. They initiated a meditation program. All 700 inmates and the staff. After that, no extreme cases of violence. A middle school in San Francisco in a neighborhood where one year they had 38 murders. The kids would come to school and find dead bodies on the playground. And of course, that kind of violence makes its way into the school. Them youths kicked off daily, all over the place, multiple fights. They initiated a meditation program, called it Quiet Time. In the first year, suspensions were cut by 45%. The next year, attendance rates were 98%. A few years later, 20% of these kids were getting accepted into the fancy pants academic high school in the neighborhood. And before that, maybe one, if at all. And when they did their survey of healthy schools, this school was the happiest in San Francisco. So I'm gonna bring in everyone else in the room to our conversation for a second. So what do we do? with this information and the situation in our city and many cities around the world. I put together a proposal for a program called Operation Prefrontal Cortex. By bringing meditation into four places, we can cast a wide net and help as many people as possible. The first place is in the middle schools and high schools. Bringing meditation into these schools will address the youth that need help, but also the benefits of meditation are well documented. The whole school, everyone benefits. We have a student body that's healthier, happier, and smarter. The second place is in the jails. These are the ones that slipped to the cracks. We didn't get to them soon enough, and they've been out in the streets causing trouble, but they still need help. The third place is another 
area that doesn't get discussed much. It is bringing meditation into the neighborhoods that are afflicted by violence, by utilizing community groups and programs that already exist and putting meditation into those. Because even though these kids out in the neighborhoods might not be violent themselves, they know that kid who got shot and murdered. They know that little girl who got shot at the playground. They, these are players they know, and it's traumatizing. You could imagine what it would be like to be in grade school and find out the girl who sat next to you got shot. They need help. And bringing that meditation into that area, into those neighborhoods, can help them as well. But the kid who is out in the street causing trouble is not going to the community center arts program to meditate. So how do we get to them? Richmond, California, in 2007, had a wave of gun violence. They had 47 murders. That was eight times the national average in a city record. They created a program called Operation Peacekeeper. Operation Peacekeeper took reformed criminals and made them mentors to teenagers that were still in the streets, but the police and the authorities didn't have enough evidence to actually arrest. It was a fellowship program, and if they met all the requirements, they actually started to make a salary. And when you look at the news stories and you hear the interviews, for some of these kids, it's the first time they ever opened a bank account, had some real responsibility, a, a father or brother figure in their life. And in the first year, the gun homicide rates dropped by 40% in that city. And by 2014, they met their city low of 11 gun homicides. By bringing meditation into that program, we cover a wide area. We don't get everybody, but we get a lot. That's why I made this TED Talk, to be a resource for all of us that want to see change, to put all this information in one place and be easy to send out teachers and principals and police officers and police chiefs and commissioners, politicians on all levels of government, judges, social workers, anyone you think needs it, needs this information and can implement this program. Because it doesn't take nothing. We could do it today in the first three places. A uh, quiet room and closed eyes, and we go. But as for you, the man who shot me, you owe me. And my price is meditation. You start meditating today, and you keep it up. And then when you do, and one day you see me out here, you come up and let me know. You got the message.